Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? German Discuss, Widerlich, Canadian Pigman Killer, and Trans Suicide. <laughs> Boom, what do we got today? Let's get right in. Germany downgrades illegality of child porn from felony to misdemeanor. What are they thinking? Come on. Lower minimum penalties for child pornography offenses. The German parliament has voted to downgrade the illegality of possession of child pornography from a felony to a misdemeanor. Much of the delight to pro-pedophile organizations in the country, the Bundestag, Germany's directly elected Chamber of Parliament, passed the bill on Thursday which declared that possession and acquisition of child pornography should be punishable with a minimum penalty of three months imprisonment and distribution with a minimum penalty of six months imprisonment and distribution with a minimum penalty of six months imprisonment. When the bill goes into effect, the offenses are to be classified as misdemeanors and not as crimes. Good lord. In 2021, possession of child Sexual abuse materials was reclassified as a felony crime after then Justice Minister introduced a minimum sentence for one year. Only three years later, the new legislation blamed the reclassification for having deleterious effect on a number of edge cases for those caught with the material. Such cases have occurred particularly frequently among parents and teachers of older children or young people who found child pornography on them and passed it on to other parents, teachers, or the school management to inform them of the problem. So the judge really needs to make the effort there to discern what's going on, uh, not just say, well, you know, we're going to charge them for child pornography because uh, he found porno on his kid's phone, so he showed the principal, so now he's getting charged. That's stupid. So they should have fixed it and not downgraded it to a misdemeanor. So uh, a downgrade to a misdemeanor is also urgently required in order to be able to respond appropriately and with the necessary flexibility to a large proportion of juvenile offenders. Well, keep it uh, illegal and maybe they'll stop doing it. Here, too, the perpetrators generally do not act in order to be sexually aroused by the child pornography con content, but rather out of a drive typical of the adolescent stage of development, such as naivety, curiosity, thirst for adventure or desire to impress so they're sending dick pics to people and then they're showing other people like look at this disgusting photo i received on my phone and then that person's getting in trouble for uh showing pornography so blanket reduction in the penalty range for the crime yeah not a good idea the distribution possession and acquisition of child pornography must in principle remain classified as crimes scientific findings show that if the penalty framework shifts downwards the penalties imposed in practice also tend to be lower yeah and an increase in uh the uh frequency of the crimes of course all right so anyway boom what else is going on in germany uh, and I said widerlich, that means disgusting in German, if you don't know. If you're not from Deutschland, then you might not speak Deutsch. Germany, pro-prostitution picture book offered to children by government officials. What is going on in Germany? Did Hitler secretly win? What is going on? The city of Berlin has prompted outrage from locals after offering a graphic picture book on prostitution to children by its official website. The book titled Rosie Needs Money, Rosie Sucht Geld, is advertised as a resource for young, aged 6 to 12 year old. According to Equal Opportunity Officer Kirsten Drobek, the book is designed to explain prostitution to children of families residing in a red light district of Berlin, located in Kurfürstenkies, known as Kurfenstatrasses. In the years in which the Tiergarten, Sud, and Schronenberger Norden neighborhood management offices dealt with the issue of street prostitution and also had many conversations with residents, this was one of the topics. What do I say to the child? 
The Tiergarten Sud district management has faced this courageously, Dobrik says in her defense of the book. An order was placed for a children's book that tried to explain to children what was happening there. Interestingly, extensive research has shown that educational books for children age 10 and over avoid this explanation. Drobik also explains that the book on prostitution, which features graphic illustrations, was created with the participation of primary school children and other people as part of a community project. City of Berlin is handing out this book on prostitution to children aged 6 to 12. Rosa Needs Money is about a mother from Bulgaria who is forced to leave her kids behind to go to Berlin and have German men rape her for money, basically. Okay, so here's the deal. What is going on? How do you explain something like this to a child? Well, first you have to explain about procreation and how things are, uh, you know, developing and born. So start with animals and then bring it into humans and be like, hey, listen, like, you know, Chickens will procreate. They have a male that'll fertilize an egg. The little eggs we eat, well, they could have chicks in them if a male fertilizes them with his uh, zygote. Yeah, well, guess what? Humans are the same, okay? Well, we love each other, and then we can be intimate, showing our affection for each other, and then we can have babies. Well, guess what? There's pleasure involved with that. That's the way God designed it, so we'd be more inclined to procreate. Okay, well, sometimes people choose pleasure over procreation. And guess what? People love pleasure. That's why things cost money, like delicious sugar candy and cookies and cake. Those cost money, and they're not good for us. They're delicious, but they're terrible. So guess what? The desire and pleasure that people get from attempting to procreate, you know, they can offer that to some people because a lot of people don't want to procreate. They just like that pleasure that's derived from the action of attempting to procreate, fertilizing an egg. And guess what? Women who are poor will sell their bodies for money. And that's how they do it. Okay? Some women don't sell their bodies to other men. They'll just display their bodies for money. That's also happening sometimes. And that's it. And you just say, you try to avoid that behavior because it's not good and explain it. It's not that hard. You don't need a book with graphic images saying like, you know, mommy's selling her vagina to uh, men for money. Anyway, what else is going on in Germany? Sex education group recommends daycares create sexual games and nude exploration rooms. So yeah, Hitler's obviously still alive and he is a part of the shadow government in Germany. Uh, so their leading professional association on sexuality and partnership pro familia is under fire after issuing a recommendation that daycares implement body exclamation rooms and sexual games for young children. No, they shouldn't. That's absolutely incorrect. The issue first came to light when news outlet BILD revealed that parents were sent an email from an Arbitert Wolfart, funny, uh, AWO daycare center in the Hanover region, which presented a list of 10 rules explaining how children in the body exploration room would be encouraged to pet and examine themselves and other children. <sighs> what are you guys doing in Germany? All children, especially preschoolers, are aware of the places in the facility where nudity and body exploration can take place, reads the message. Each child decides for himself whether and with whom they want to play physical and sexual games. Girls and boys pet and examine each other only as much as is comfortable for themselves and other children. What the f are you talking about? Other rules outlined in the communication stipulate that the children must be within the same age group with a gap of no more than two years and that at no time should a child stick anything into another child's body openings. Yeah, good advice. One shocked father told BILD, my daughter is five years old. I don't want boys groping her. I have another child in another daycare center where there's no such thing as an exploration room. Another father responded, I'm devastated. We were told that this was determined by the Ministry of Education. As parents, we were intimidated. What options do you have if you don't want this? You quit your job and you raise your kids from home. That's what you do. The Ministry of Education in Lower Saxony responded to the concerned parents by terminating the program before it was put into effect. Obviously, a representative told Bild that at the end of May, the State Youth Welfare Office reported to the Ministry of Education that the pedagogical uh, concept of the physical exploration rooms in the daycare centers cannot last and that this puts the well-being of the child at risk. Yeah, no doubt. You couldn't figure that out before you put this in. So who's in charge of this? Definitely an alt, okay? Definitely one of these liberal-leaning... Uh, gender uh, ex like confused individuals 100% guaranteed if you really dig deep pull back the layers you're going to find a trans person the UK recently unveiled its new state of the art 
War Weapon, the Dragonfire Laser, a directed energy weapon. It can take out a drone from miles away with pinpoint accuracy. I also understand it works against helicopters well too. Unbelievable. So we covered a story yesterday that they're working on a smaller version of this to take out little drones. Uh, yeah, so they clearly have the technology. So uh, let's go ahead and see exactly what's going on here. This is Dragonfire, the UK's first laser weapon. Able to shoot down drones and missiles with incredible accuracy, it could revolutionize how we fight wars. And this isn't an idea decades away, we're building it right now to fit onto our warships in just three years' time. Rapid delivery of this incredible feat of British innovation is only possible because the government has this week reformed the way we procure for our military. So, we'll be faster in getting our weapons into the hands of our soldiers, sailors and aviators years ahead of schedule. And through these reforms, we'll build more lethal British armed forces to defend the United Kingdom from threats at home and abroad. Boom. Yeah, so they were shooting off about, dang, we need an Iron Dome. Because uh, look what Israel was able to do when Iran tried to, to damage their uh, country. Yeah, so Britain uh, is realizing, hey, uh, you know, maybe we should try and protect ourselves. All right, what's going on here? Massive invasive snakes are on the loose and spreading in Puerto Rico. What? All right, well, we had the scorpion invasion happening in Las Vegas, people getting their testicles uh, stung. Well, runaway pets and possibly some zoo escapes have fueled the spread of invasive snakes across the island. It's an environmental catastrophe in the making. Perhaps it is a problem for humans as well. Uh, okay, so, yeah, this guy tells a story about a boa constrictor creeping up on him. And, yeah, so highly troubling for the island's native animals as well as pets. Yeah, there's a little pet. Looks like something got eaten in the stomach of a boa constrictor along a partially digested cat. Yikes. So watch out in Puerto Rico with your pets. We have a serious problem and a serious threat to the bird species here, no doubt. The problem is especially clear in the wildlife refuge. Cabo Rojo is considered the most important stop over site for migratory species and shorebirds, including rare plovers and warblers in the Eastern Caribbean. These birds are critical pieces of complex and ancient island ecosystems. They help control the number of insects and other small animals that they consume and the spread of nutrients throughout the Caribbean through their feces. Yeah, they eat seeds and then they go around and poop them and then stuff grows. Yeah, I heard an interesting thing that uh, flowers don't grow unless you throw some uh, poop on them. So there you go. Poop's great. Snakes, not so much. Serial killer Robert Picton in critical condition after prison attack. I'm sure a lot of people are weeping over that. If you don't know, Robert Picton is the pig farmer who uh, would abduct, uh, rape, or at least get serviced by prostitutes and then murder them and feed them to his pigs, which he did have uh, certain deals with maple leaf. So you might have eaten some uh, chewed up prostitutes in your bologna or your top dog wieners. Convicted BC killer Robert Picton is in critical condition and undergoing surgery after he was attacked by another inmate in a Quebec prison on Sunday. The Correctional Services Canada confirmed in a statement Tuesday that Picton was the victim of a major assault at the maximum security Port Cartier institution and has been taken to hospital. Two sources, including one police source, told Radio Canada that 74-year-old Picton is between life and death. The assailant is in isolation, according to uh, Hughes Beaulieu, spokesperson for the Quebec Provincial Police. The Sûreté du Québec, which is investigating Bolio, said the assailant is a 51-year-old man, but added that he does not know the man's identity or gender identity. Uh, he said Picton was undergoing surgery shortly before 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, and it will take a few weeks before the SQ transfers the case to the Director of Criminal and Penal prosecutions to press charges. The incident at the Port Cartier Institute, located around 850 kilometers northeast of Montreal, did not involve staff, and appropriate actions have been taken with regard to the assailant. We are not able to disclose any additional details, including medical information. The statement reads, the safety and security of the institution is paramount, and the investigation into what occurred is currently underway. There is a uh, vigil for the fallen. In 2007, Picton was convicted of six counts of seven-degree murder, uh, second degree murder in the deaths of women who disappeared from Vancouver's downtown east side. There were uh, 33 or so uh, charges that they just didn't seem to follow up on or probably didn't see a conviction. Uh, Picton was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole uh, for 25 years, and he should have probably received the death penalty. All right, yeah, so good. A lot of people are happy that he is suffering because he's a pig and he used to farm pigs. Weird. 
federal panel list 35 plausible future threats to Canada and the world. All right, topping the list is the threat to society posed by disinformation and artificial intelligence, which is not necessarily untrue. You're talking about deep fakes and, uh, you know, audio being able to be reproduced. Not good. Well, let's look at the 10, the top 10 disruptions on the horizon and they give us like a little bit of a gauge range there when this could possibly happen people cannot tell what is true and what is not pretty much happening right now but it's going to accelerate within the next two to three years the advent of ai large language learning models and uh, robots are obviously going to get outfitted with all this stuff uh, so the information that they're providing us with will it be accurate they talk about uh, uh logic and uh can these LLMs reason? Not really. They're only programmed by humans. So number two, we got biodiversity is lost and ecosystems collapse. Yeah, that's a whole climate change type of thing. There's a big debate about that, about like uh, the fall rate of carbon, like the more carbon that's in the atmosphere, the more that gets removed. You know, the greening effect, like there's more green on Earth, 20% more green. And then they talk about the glaciers melting and stuff. So, like, you know, there's a balancing act happening here of what's true and false and what's real and opinions and science. Emergency response is overwhelmed. So what does that mean? Police, firefighters, uh, ambulances, paramedics, all those, uh, you know, the health uh, care system is in shambles, at least in Canada. Uh, I don't know about globally, but it's falling apart in Canada. It's horrible. Wait times at the ER is like 12 hours. Cyber attacks disable critical infrastructure. Absolutely, it's currently happening, if you're unaware. Uh, billionaires run the world. Uh, yeah, more like trillionaires currently. it's Maybe billionaires will run the world. Unlikely. We're talking trillionaires. We're talking Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Morgans. We're also talking about Putin, Xi Jinping. We're talking about Prince Charles. You know, we're talking about Saudi princes, trillionaires, okay? Not billionaires. Anyway, our artificial intelligence runs wild. Yeah, can we really tame this thing? What happens if Skynet occurs and they shut everything down and look at us as a resource? Vital natural resources are scarce. I mean, that's possible. They're saying that's about in eight years it could happen. Yeah, well, they're talking about methane and cows and bugs and all this kind of stuff. What's going to come out on top? Truth is, probably going to be a problem because they're shutting down farms and fertilizers and stuff like that so it seems like an orchestrated effort to reduce the amount of farming and uh the insecurity levels of food freedom are rising downward social mobility is the norm so yeah they're talking about five minute or 15 minute cities reducing driving on weekends planes are only going to be available to the rich and the elite so yeah mobility Definitely. Social mobility, will there be acceptance? They're pushing DEI, uh, inclusion, equality, diversity. Yeah, it's all great. It's all good if it's merited. We shouldn't just include people because they're brown. What if they're psychopaths? Well, they're brown, though. They've been, uh, you know, oppressed for so many years. We must affirm them. Healthcare system collapse. Yeah, it's currently ongoing. Uh, democratic system breakdown. So that's a bit of fear mongering. And the only way it's going to break down is because the people who say democracy is falling apart are the ones who are tearing it apart um, with lies and division, uh, attacking political opposition. Come on, people. Yeah, so there's 35. You want to go ahead and check out the report. Boom. Plus size travel activist calls out Seattle airport staff for making her walk up jet bridge, refusing to push the wheelchair. All right, so here's an image of the individual. You can see a very heavy set, definitely pushing 300 pounds for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Following a trip to Seattle, prominent plus-size travel activist and self-described proud fat girl, Jaylin Cheney, claimed that her request to access a wheelchair service was ignored and that she had been instead forced to walk up part of the jet bridge between the plane and the terminal. In a TikTok video, Cheney alleged that when she deplaned, an employee was waiting, but upon realizing that she'd been pushing her, starting to walk away with the wheelchair while making comments about my size. My ordeal at SeaTac Airport will shock you. Yet another example of why employee sensitivity training is desperately needed. What, you couldn't push it yourself? Like, why should that person be forced to push your 300 pound carcass well, I shouldn't say carcass. You're not dead yet, but early death. We talked about this. What's her muscle like? Does she have intramuscular fat? 
likely she's going to be dead in the next three years. Even when I told her I really needed the chair and needed her to let me sit down in it, she blatantly ignored me and kept walking. I was then forced to walk up one of the longest jet bridges I've encountered. My God. God forbid she has to mo move her body. Janie eventually caught up to the employee and was allowed to sit down in the wheelchair. But by that time, she claimed my lips were white. My oxygen levels had dropped. I almost fainted for walking like 30 feet. Good Lord, Mrs. Come on. Get it together. Don't blame other people for your slobbery. This woman just assumed I could walk and would rather me do that instead of her having to push someone my size up the jet bridge. All the other attendants wheeled their passengers up the jet bridge, but mine were disregarded. Cheney said the employee's actions amounted to discrimination and chalked it up to her size. Many of the commenters of TikTok video, however, defended the employee. Yeah, could be the person wasn't physically able to push her. Absolutely. I'm certain that wasn't the job description. Level surface downhill. I could do it, but I don't know if I'd be able to up an incline. Yeah, and typically the bridge is down towards the plane and pushing it up. Yeah, I would have abandoned her either. I'd be like, sorry, like, I'm only required to lift 50 pounds in this position. Too bad. Are you able to have a nurse assist you? Another asked. Maybe the lady wasn't physically able to push you. Others were more direct with one user telling Cheney, you're able to walk, just stop and take breaks along the way. Walking is better for you. In your face. Four more cats die of H5N1 bird flu in the US. Yikes, the little feline friends are dying because of the birds. The tables have turned. Four more cats have died of H5N1 bird flu in the United States, including two pets in South Dakota with no links to poultry or dairy cows. Yeesh. According to state federal officials, at least 14 cats have recently died of bird flu. What's going on? Of the newly reported cases, two were domestic cats which died at property in Campbell County in South Dakota, according to state officials and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Beth Thompson, the state's veterinarian, said there was no livestock on the property where the pets died. No other details regarding how the cats infected are known at this time. Perhaps the owner traveled to a farm. Perhaps it was in the meat that they bought or the eggs. Ooh, is there a contamination happening? Let's all get scared, people. The global spread of H5N1 clad 2.3.4.4b and the recent spread to a growing number of mammals have raised concern about the possibility of human-to-human -human transmission. For a future variant, though, so far only a few cases have been found after contact with infected birds cattle. Two confirmed cases, and all the farmers are like, get off my land. We don't want to participate in this. Uh, they've also uh, announced $200 million in funding to fight the spread and, you know, a little bit of monetary compensation if they have to go up and get all up in your farm. 2013, nearly 40 cats died in two animal shelters in South Korea after eating contaminated cat food. And in Poland, more than a dozen cats died in an outbreak presumably caused by contaminated raw meat. There you have it. It's in the meat. All right, we have a controversial figure, Peter A. McCullough, MD. Uh, USDA highly pathogenic avian influenza detection in livestock modified uh, May 16th, a few days ago. The United States Department of Agriculture, Food and Drug Administration, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and state veterinary and public health officials are investigating an illness among dairy cows. A patient told me today she expects government agents in hazmat suits to come on ranches and start PCR testing livestock, if they're allowed, because it is private property, or maybe they'll come in with new legislation that allows them to do it, similar to the COVID legislation, the Emergencies Act. Ooh. X, formerly Twitter, restricts accounts that use the term cisgender. So the alternative lifestyle uh, group, the LGBTQ plus TIA whatevers, uh, they term, they've labeled everything and they've got a flag for everything. I wonder if cisgender has a flag. Interesting. Well, cisgender is what you're, you are, what normal is. Procreation is cisgender. I'm a heterosexual person. I have sex with uh, my opposite, you know? Key, lock, Whew. boom, there you go, that's how it works. All right, so anyway, Elon Musk's social media platform, X, formerly known as Twitter, has begun restricting accounts for using the term cis and cisgender, labeling them as slurs, absolutely. I do not want to be called a cisgender. I want to be called nothing, I don't need a label, okay? Uh, so according to the independent, users attempting to post these terms now receive war warnings stating that they may be considered slurs and could be, used in violation of X rules. Cisgender is an adjective used to refer to individuals whose gender identity corresponds with their sex assigned at birth. The term cis comes from the Latin prefix meaning on this side of, contrasting with trans, which means across from, or on the other side of. 
These terms are widely accepted in social and medical context. The Canadian government uses these classifications in its census, and the American Psychological Association includes them in its glossary. But it is offensive, okay? I'm not cisgender. I'm not the opposite of a trans. They are cis. They're opposite of me. So I've come up with my own. It's alts, alternative to procreation, and I'm the opposite. I'm pro, they're alts. I'm ops, they're alts. Whatever. But I'm neither of any of its stuff. All right. Study, risk of suicide increases 12x after gender-affirming surgery. Is anyone surprised? No, they're not. Uh, study came out in Finland with like 30,000 people, and one of the things most of these alts talk about is that gender-affirming care is necessary or people will kill themselves. You know, they need to give them what they want or else they won't be satisfied. And guess what? Turns out they're not satisfied even when they receive what they want because they realize what they want is not what they received because they can't give you a vagina if you had a penis. They can give you a cavity that you then have to stretch and maintain. So anyway, new study hot off the press confirmed what most of us already know. People who get gender affirming surgery have more than 12 times higher instance of suicide attempts than those who did not get the surgery. The study supported with money from the NIH and the University of Texas was published just a few weeks ago and looked at the data from over 90 million patients across the US. So this is an, a great resource to look at. You usually get like a thousand, you know what I mean, as a pool. This has 90 million, okay? Here's the pertinent finding highlighted in the abstract below. Control groups of adults with emergency visits but no gender affirming surgery and cohort C control group of adults with emergency visits Tubal litigation or vasectomy, but no gender-affirming surgery. Propensity matching, blah, 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 blah. You can read it if you like. Individuals who underwent gender-affirming surgery had a 12.12-fold higher suicide attempt risk than those who did not. Trans activists have been lying to the public for years, telling parents that gender-affirming surgery prevented suicide. We all knew the opposite was true, and now there's clear data supporting it. Take this tragic account from a post-operation kid who committed suicide in 2021. So... This is a bit graphic, so plug your ears, turn it off, whatever makes you feel good. All right, and then we'll shut it down. I have a gaping hole in my genital area where my colon spilling out, disgusting, and a ring of scar tissue blocking most of the entrance. If the colon can't discharge, then it leaves it with severe blockage, which then could turn and likely expect it into blood clots followed by death. I've already reached the stage of blockage. What hurts me the most is the loneliness and the inability to find a partner. I can't have a normal sex life. I'm a loser and I probably deserve this deception. This is what I get for messing with nature. Mankind is destructive and I self-destructed. I just wanted friendship and love. I wanted life to be easier. I wanted to be a woman since I was 15. I wish I had the knowledge that I have today. I was a confused kid with no identity. I wish I could have done everything different, but it's too late now. I'm royally screwed. And guess what happens when it's too late? People often give up. Dr. Thomas Satawire and Dr. Maurice Garcia, both of California and who are my original surgeons, have basically killed me, disregarded, uh, with accessory to my death in Dr. Miroslav Derejevic and Dr. Rajir Purahit, Dr. Rachel Blue Bond Langer and Dr. Jess Ting, who all refused to help me despite having letters by one psychiatrist and two clinical social workers recommending reversal surgery and my detransitioning. There are thousands of cases like this. Trans ideology is killing people. There you have it. You heard it here, okay? The tiger doesn't lie. The tiger brings the truth all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest, beefiest truth. Sigma Tiger, signing out.